who are satisfied by this. And it's a democratic process, and we feel that selecting the first people who go to Mars should be a democratic process, because in a thousand years, people will still remember who they are. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, as I remember, a Curiosity Rover mission costs over two billion dollars. How can it visit your whole mission, which is much more complicated, will cost just a six billion? Yeah, that's a very good question. The, the reason, some of the reasons why current space missions are very expensive is that they are organized by ESA and NASA. And ESA and NASA are very large bureaucratic organizations, and large bureaucratic organizations are expensive. There's a joke in, in aerospace companies uh, that I heard many times when I, when I visited them, and they ask how much does it cost to send one kilo to space? So you say maybe $10,000 or whatever you want to say. And they say no, 1,000 kilos of paper. So 1,000 kilos of paperwork to get one kilo of cargo to orbit, and that's very expensive. So that's a very important reason, but there's a few other ones. There are new companies uh, emerging that do things a lot cheaper than the, the uh, companies that have been exi the aerospace companies that have been existing for a long time. So, for instance, SpaceX, the, one of the companies that we're talking to for the launches, is uh, the, the launch for the Curios Curiosity rover would have been five times cheaper if they used SpaceX for it. So instead of half a billion, it would have been a hundred million. So it, there, you can save a lot of money. But the third important reason, and that's a very important one, it's very uh, underestimated often, is that the, uh, the space agencies that do these missions now, they have a supporting uh, member states, so in, in the European Space Agency, that's the member states of the European Space Agency, in NASA, it's the states of the USA, and they have a, a, an economic return uh, rule, which means that if one country can, uh, uh, contributes 2% of the of the budget, then they need to receive 2% of the uh, of the budget in return in orders. So maybe we have to order a component from Holland, but we don't really want a component from Holland. So now we have to find difficult solutions to include one Dutch company. While in our case we don't have these politic political restraints, so we will look for the best company. We don't care if it's one company. We don't care where it is. We will find the best company that offers us the best price for the best product. And we will let this company build the entire product. So all the interfacing, I don't know how many people here have worked on interfacing, but anywhere where you have a Dutch component, meeting a Portuguese and a French and a German component, things go wrong. So we will have one supplier that will build the entire component, the entire rover. And if they need subcontractors for that, they can find their own local favorite subcontractors, which are close to them, which, with whom they've already worked a lot of times. And that's the third reason why it can be a lot cheaper. So, the six billion is a figure that has really been discussed with every with every supplier. So, we, when we talk to the company, the, the companies that we consider for our rovers, we, we've discussed, okay, this is the budget we have in mind. Is that realistic? And sometimes they have said, it's too much, or it's too little, or it's just about right. And we've really used their feedback to come up with this budget. Of course, we've added some failures, we've added some, uh, some uns big uncertainties. And that's how we came up with the six billion. So I really, I really believe that if we have six billion, this is possible. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Where are you? Ah, I'm here. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first one is, uh, you said that you will organize the TV shows to select the people. Uh, I wonder. Will you have a predefined uh, specialities that they should have? And another one is... Uh, Can I first answer that one? Sure. Otherwise I will forget it by the end of your second question. So what will be the selection criteria for the people who go there? To me this was actually a big surprise. We don't necessarily need people who have uh, a degree in engineering or in, in, in medicine or in, in plant growing. And these are the, the three major uh, things on Mars, because we are going to train them for seven years. So the most important thing is, we will select them for their ability to work in a group. Because this is the ultimate group challenge. They are four people who are leaving for seven months in a small, in a small vessel to Mars, under tremendous stress, doing something that's never been done before. 
They will land on Mars, there will be with just the four of them in a very dangerous environment for two years before the second group, group joins them. So that's a very challenging environment. So we need the people who can cope with these conditions. That's the most important selection criteria. And then, since we have, we will select the, the selection will start this year, we will finish in 2015 by hiring about six groups of uh, people who will train full-time for our mission for seven years. And in those seven years, you can get an engineering degree and a medical degree. So the, the real skills that they have, the, the real background that they have now is not so important as compared to how good they can uh, do the group, uh, the challenges that the group will face. And we will test them for these, for these conditions. So every, we'll train them for seven years. And every year, each of those groups will be in a copy of the Mars outpost here on Earth for three months. In, in Martian conditions, so they won't have the communication uh, abilities uh, like usual, but they'll have the delays. And on Mars, of course, we hope that everything will go very well, but when we test them on Earth, when we test and train them on Earth, we will give them all kinds of terrible conditions, all kinds of terrible situations, where, where we will really find out if they stay, if, they re if the group remains intact under these extreme conditions. So we'll make sure that that everyone who's, who's going there is trained by us in exactly the things that they need to be able to do. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, what about the medical services on Mars? Uh, will you send at least uh, one doctor? Uh, Thank you. So, we, as I said, we won't require people to be a doctor when they apply. But of course we have to teach them medical skills. We will send a, uh, a medical kit to Mars and every year we will keep adding uh, additions to that. And of course medicine. But you don't really need a brain surgeon on Mars. Because there's not, there's not the environment, there's not the, the technology you need to do brain surgery. So the conditions on Mars will be much simpler than here on Earth. There will be conditions that you get here on Earth, you go to the hospital and they fix you. And if you get the same thing on Mars, then you really have a problem. Because there are just things that we cannot do. But this is of course the same in, for instance, the, the Arctic stations. Where you, you, in the winter times, in some of the stations, you simply cannot leave. It doesn't matter what's the matter with you, you simply cannot leave because nobody can pick you up. So, the, the medical conditions will be worse than on Earth, will be less, less developed than on Earth. But of course, we'll, everybody will be trained in medical conditions. So two people will be trained as very good field medics who can do all the things that usually go wrong with people. And two will be trained as nurses. And if there's something that they need to do on Mars, which they were not trained for, then we can train them uh, with, by sending the, the instruction videos, helping them test, uh, train on the simulator, and finally uh, doing it on the real patient. Okay. And that's one more question. Look here, IQ Pulse. How much would you like to leave planet Earth in order to discover Mars. Are you happy with the results? Yeah, it's uh, about 3%, so that's not too bad. Yeah, it's, I, I said 2 to 4%, I think. So, uh, yeah, it's exactly as expected. Please applause. Thank you very much. And more interesting things are coming, so just please stay tuned and meet you here.